Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is mid-October, so time for a little tour of the flower farm. I'm outside my back door with the last of the gorgeous Hadspun salvias are flowering away in this sheltered spot. Um, so I thought you'd take it. I'll take you around the garden and you can see what we're up to, where we've got to, and where we're going <laughs> this flower farmer's year. Come on. And if you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Please do subscribe, press the bell icon, and I'll tell you when I've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks we give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee, or better still, join my club. The links to coffee buying and club membership are in the blurb to all my clips. And you'll have to forgive my being a little wind blown, for it is windy, which is why I've remembered even my microphones. Come on, let's go. We'll start with the polytunnels. We have a long one and a shorter one. I'll show you inside. This is, this is the smaller of the two tunnels and it has just been cleared. I had all my tomatoes, chilies and aubergines and cucumbers in here. Um, and it's been cleared so that the winter, overwintering crop of sweet peas can be planted in here when they're big enough. A little bit of drying, Nicandra physaloides there for Christmas wreaths and I keep this white honesty in here um, and it comes back year after year it makes a lovely early crop and the last gleanings of the polytunnel have come into the kitchen where they will be strung up or cooked <laughs> or eaten or dealt with one way or another and this is the longer tunnel, slowly filling up. The space here in front of me will be ranunculus. I've got more honesty here. Larkspur. Levatera. Amimagus. Wild carrot. Uh, the Caria Hispanica, very small over there. Um, slowly these things are being put in. Uh, very unlike me to be growing a little group of cornflowers. Bapleurum. Chinese forget-me-not. And then some biennials over here. We've got wallflowers. Sweet William. Sweet Rocket and foxgloves and I water in here and we get self-sown seedlings popping up so look another little lot of levatera gone in the corner there I'm keeping a close eye out for some snapdragons because they seed themselves freely in here and then we can gather them all together so oh look There are a few gathered snaps, just a few. And as the winter goes on and we water very sparingly, I will add things as they pop up. The greenhouse is sort of filling up with little people to overwinter in here. Here, here are the sweet peas, which will eventually be planted in the tunnel where I showed you cuttings we took recently. One random Amimagus plant from a workshop and so on. These sweet peas are ready for pinching out. One, two sets of true leaves. Pinch. One, two sets of true leaves. Pinch. And on we go. Now I dug up the dahlias last week there's a whole clip about it if you'd like to see um, so this bed under which is my narcissi crop now needs a sort out a tidy up a little light mulch and then we're ready for the narcissi to peek through and give us a crop next april and across the way here uh from the x uh, x dahlia bed We've got lovely swathes of Verbena bonariensis and blue Salvia uglinosa. And 
I'm going to harvest some of these because I have a pricing cut flowers for sale workshop this evening online. Uh, you can book a place should you be interested. Um, and I'm going to be, I need to cut some bits and pieces at, to be visual aids in my workshop this evening. Um, all of my workshops are available as downloads as well as to join live. Uh, so do have a look at the website. Um, we've got one coming up on the 15th of November about growing amazing dahlias. And tonight we have uh, pricing cut flowers for sale, which is always popular because people really struggle to decide how to, how to base their prices. And I have really simple formulas which you can use to help you choose your prices. We are not very brilliant compost makers, but we'll use what we make. I sieve the compost and put it onto the beds as we clear them. I do also order about 16 tonnes of Dalefoot Lakeland Gold a year, with which we mulch our beds uh, because I don't make enough compost myself. Sorry about the wind! We are not strictly no dig, but when we clear our beds of annuals, we chop the annuals off and leave the roots in the ground because they're covered in really good mycorrhiza, which encourages the symbiosis between the plant and the earth. And so I'm not going to rip out good roots covered in mycorrhiza. So this is where the amaranthus was. And those roots will stay in the ground, providing rotting down slowly, providing nutrients, keeping the mycorrhiza in the soil, preventing us from disturbing the soil too much. But I wouldn't describe us as strictly no dig because we do dig. If I'm going to plant good sized dahlia plants, small dahlia plants, I dig a foot down. If I'm planting tulip bulbs, I dig. <laughs> so we do dig. So I'm not going to sort of call myself no dig, but I'm a keen mulcher and I do see the point of trying to avoid disturbing the soil too much. And it seems perfectly sensible to me to leave as much of the roots of uh, annuals which have been being harvested all summer in the ground to feed the soil, keep the mycorrhiza there. For us, break up the clay a bit, win-win. So we are slowly clearing the end of the year. All the um, hose pipes are being lifted and cleaned up and rolled up and put away. Um, the beds are getting cleared and mulched. But you can see as I get further, I haven't quite taken up my Cobia Scandon's Spanish flag combination yet because that was, goodness, that has given me a lot of pleasure over the last few months. Wow. Um, but you see, as I get closer back towards the house, there's a lot of spring in the ground. So a load of foxgloves over there, honesty here. More foxgloves over there. Um, I'm going to leave the snapdragons out here this winter. We'll see how they do, if they'll do me another year. They may or may not. Um, I'm trying. We'll see how they do over there. Those are hollyhocks. We'll see whether they like it. They're, I mean, they're a bit rusty now. <laughs> But, well, so we'll see what food in the spring. You know, they've got to survive the winter. One of the other things that we do at this time of year is keep an eye out for lots of self-sown seedlings. And these are Chinese forget-me-nots. So I can lift these and spread them out, rationalise them to make the most of free plants. And... Then I've got more biennials here. Sweet William, Sweet William. And everything is slowly getting sorted out. Sort of putting the garden to bed. 
but we've still got some of this lovely Chinese forget-me-not flowering here so I'm going to have some of that for my my pricing cut flowers for sale workshop I dug up some dahlias here they this needs raking over and mulching but you can see why I don't call myself no dig they have been dug <laughs> thoroughly dug self-sown nigella I will not waste those seedlings the crab apples had the most incredible year last year. They were, the, the, these, this little group of trees were absolutely weighed down. So the branches were hanging on the ground with the weight of the fruit. And they're doing what they often do, which is have a sort of year off this year, except for this variety. This is a little Siberian crab apple, tiny, tiny, whoops, tiny fruit. I'm going to cut some because it'd be useful for my workshop um, talking about how to price things for sale but also I've got some floral commissions to do tomorrow and I can use this. Now we grow quite a lot of willow here because we're on wet Somerset clay and at this time of year the willow really colours up so that when it comes time to cut it for our Christmas wreaths uh, it's really, really bright colours and looks amazing, but we won't cut it until most of the leaves are off because we don't want to be too dramatic with the poor old plants. But the colour fairly glows, doesn't it? And here we are up at the shrubs and perennials beds. Not much to cut now, but my season is officially over. Let's open the gate and go and have a look inside. On the left there, my new studio, uh, which is part of the total redesign of the flower farm, which is slowly happening. Um, clubbers, you know all about it, don't you? <laughs> it's a big old project, but you know, you've got to, one thing at a time, one thing at a time, slowly, slowly, everything comes in good time. So, uh, what can I show you up here? Just tidy, really. The roses are, have almost done. Um, I will cut, if I can find a few good ones, I'll cut them for my, my pricing cut flowers for sale workshop. Then they get, they get really pruned hard in the deep midwinter and they'll have a huge mulch. Um, quite a lot of empty bed space. And I will come up here and have a count up of how much space I've got that I can fill for next year and see what I might, see if I might spend some money or whether I might grow some plants or what I might do. Um, the Veronicastrum, which used to be covered in bees there, is now a wonderful cut seed head really dramatic uh, so i'll cut some of that now and uh, use it for my pricing cut flowers for sale workshop and for my floral commissions tomorrow i've also got my one surviving penstemon garnet I think I need to take some more cuttings of that. I've taken a few and they're okay, but I need another 10 or so, I think. And the foliage, the, the deciduous foliage up here is really looking very dry and crunchy now. But we have, nice color though. For winter orders, we have this lovely grisolinia, which is such a good zingy green on a really good greeny stem. Um, it's, it can be quite tender, so uh, it struggles if we have a bad hard winter, but I've been hammering these for about 10 years and they're doing well. Another good winter flowering shrub. This is uh, Viburnum Eve Price. Beautiful little pinky white flowers, good green foliage, nice red stems, 
very useful cut. And I love these smaller heads of the paniculata hydrangeas. Very autumnal colours now, but really useful. Again, I'll cut some of this for my workshop, for my pricing cut flowers for sale workshop, because this is a really good example of what different ways to think about money, size, stem length and so on, freshness, multi-purpose, all of the above. So we'll cut some for my workshop and then I'll use it tomorrow for my floral commission. And the bay foliage is maturing now too. Fantastic for Christmas because of the berries. The smell is delicious. And uh, it's really great in Christmas wreaths. The newer season growth, so this is the younger growth but you can literally feel it and it's it feels stronger, it's more leathery. That's not gonna wilt anymore. Whereas bay can be quite wilty in the summer. All right, there's a lovely little selection to use as visual aids for this evening's pricing cut flowers for sale workshop. Ooh, the wind's getting up. The forecast is heavy rain. Let's get back into the studio. Right, the studio looks as though <laughs> something terrible has happened here. But this is typical of seasons change here at Common Farm Flowers. We come to the end of one process and the process of flipping for the next season means that you end up having to break quite a lot of eggs in order to make the next omelette. Here in the studio, there are piles of dahlia tubers everywhere. These are the spares for next, these are gonna go in the plant sale next year. And I made a clip last week about how I lift my dahlias, which has had something like 40,000 hits, which is amazing. So I think tomorrow I will make a clip about how I store them um, because they've had, they will have had nearly a week just sitting on the floor in here, drying out nicely. So it's time to sort them out and store them. So I'll make a clip about that tomorrow. Right, I hope you've had a nice time wandering around the garden with me. I need to have a major tidy up now before my pricing cut flowers for sale workshop. Um, and an even more major tidy up, putting the dahlias all away tomorrow. Because tomorrow evening I teach a workshop called How to Run a Lifestyle Business. And I have very, very strong feelings about how lifestyle businesses should be something which give joy to the person who runs the business, enough money to the person who runs the business, do something which is generally a good thing. I have quite revolutionary ideas about how small businesses can be run in such a way that they avoid the more for the sake of more premise and they avoid the idea that a business's value, inherent value of the actual business is more important than the life led by the person who owns the business. I hope that I have found out a really good way of making the balance so that while one, there's no such thing as free money, we all have to work hard for a living, but we don't have to be beaten to death for the sake of a valuable business, we can do something valuable, creative, helpful, a good thing, and earn enough money, but nowhere to stop. Anyway, that's my lifestyle business workshop. Come along to that. It really may change your life. <laughs> um, but first we've got pricing cut flowers for sale, so I better get on. Lovely, thanks very much for coming along everybody, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.